We've spent quite a bit of time talking about electromagnetic radiation and what it does. Now we're going to talk about a particular way to get electromagnetic radiation from one place to another. And the physics therein has some resemblance to other contexts, like optical cavities and whatnot, so it'll be somewhat generalizable for those of you that get into that sort of thing. Perhaps the most straightforward technique for getting electromagnetic radiation from place to place is broadcasting, as with a radio tower. Simply beam your signal out in all directions and forget about it. It's easy, it doesn't take any wires or conduits, and it bathes everything within a rather large radius in your signal. The downsides include the fact that your signal strength drops off like 1 over r squared, it requires line of sight, and it bathes everything within a rather large radius in your signal. There's also the possibility of signal conversion. Take your radiation, convert the information within to an electrical signal or some other format, and then send it via wires to some target location at which point the signal is reconstituted. But what we're going to talk about in this chapter is waveguides, which are basically pipes for guiding radiation from one place to another. This often involves microwave frequency radiation for the sake of transmitting power, but there are various and sundry other applications. Now, what we're going to find is that there are a bunch of different kinds of waves, which we'll refer to as modes, that can exist in a waveguide. TEM modes, where TEM stands for transverse electric and magnetic, are modes in which both the electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to the direction of propagation. It's what we see in free space waves, but it's not the only thing that can happen in a waveguide. You can also have TE modes for transverse electric, wherein the E field is perpendicular to the direction of propagation, but the B field is not. Or TM modes for transverse magnetic, wherein the B field is perpendicular to the direction propagation and the E field is not. Note that TEM, TE, and TM are terms that we've used before in the context of polarization, but they do not mean the same things here. In a waveguide, you have a rather confined geometry and walls that are generally conducting, which makes the problem much richer than if it were a mere tunnel. The electromagnetic fields that pass through such a waveguide induce charges and currents in the walls of the waveguide, which themselves contribute to the fields and result in configurations you wouldn't be able to get any other way. We'll start with something that is familiar. We'll try to construct a TEM solution for a waveguide made out of two infinite conducting parallel plates, separated by a distance b in the y direction, with z being the direction of propagation. Not the most physical thing in the world, but it'll be straightforward. Our strategy will be to start with a plane wave trial solution and then modify things as needed to fit the boundary conditions. So we'll use E equals E naught E to the IKZ minus omega T J hat and B equals minus E naught over C E to the IKZ minus omega T I hat with the directions as usual chosen such that E cross B gives the direction of propagation. We know that in the conducting walls E equals zero and del cross E equals minus dB dt implies that if E in there is zero, B can be at most constant. I guess it's possible that there's some uniform background B in the problem, but typically that constant will be zero. These fields are a solution if they satisfy the Maxwell equations in the region and the boundary conditions at the boundaries. In the free space between the plates, these solutions definitely satisfy the Maxwell equations since they satisfy the wave equations that come from them and we notice that E is polarized in the j-hat direction, which is perpendicular to the interface, and B is polarized in the i-hat direction, which is parallel to the interface. That means E parallel and B perpendicular are zero everywhere, and so the boundary conditions involving those are satisfied for free. Since E is perpendicular to the interface, the E1 perp minus E2 perp equals sigma over epsilon naught condition is non-trivial. The walls are conducting, meaning there can be induced charges in them, so we can satisfy this boundary condition if we infer that a certain kind of sigma is induced in the walls, in particular epsilon naught times e, giving us sigmas of plus or minus epsilon naught e naught cos kz minus omega t. Remember, charge needs to be real. And finally, we'll have a condition on the parallel component of b that implies the existence of induced surface currents. With b in i and n hat in plus or minus j, we'll find that the surface currents are in the k-hat direction and go like e naught over mu naught c cos kz minus omega t. 
So it turns out that plane waves will fit in a waveguide like this and form a TEM mode just fine, as long as we allow for the possibility of induced charges and currents, as per these diagrams here. The wave is propagating in the Z direction, with E oscillating in intensity and charges living in the walls to match, and B oscillating in intensity with currents living in the walls to match. From here you could also do things like calculating the pointing vector and the dispersion relation, but that'd be identical to the plane wave case, so we'll skip it for now.